Right, now I'm happy to introduce a very special panel here. It's got moderated by Luke Broyles, and we got Max and Stacey coming up to talk about the greatest rebrand in history. So why don't y'all come on up? Sorry, I have to uh, do some press uh, soon with uh, Ambassador Malena Mayorga, who used to be uh, Miss Universe El Salvador. And every time I've ever been in the press and I dress like a Bitcoiner and then she dresses like she does, I, I'm like, I see the photos in the press and I'm like, oh my God, maybe I need to wear a dress next time. That's why I'm wearing a dress at a Bitcoin conference. I've got, I've got better legs than both those women now. I try to get into Miss Universe, and apparently I am eligible. <laughs> but they said it was unfair given my former life as a Dior leg model. Well, it is a thrill to be here with you guys. Uh, this is my first time in El Salvador, and the title of our talk here is Bitcoin, the greatest rebrand in history. And so. There's a lot to talk about. Everyone El Salvador, the greatest. El, El Salvador, correct. El Salvador. Same thing, synonymous. Yes, right? yes, synonymous. I love your hat, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, there's so much going on here in person, rebranding, change, and then obviously bonds, El Salvador's bonds were recently upgraded in the last couple of days here. Yesterday. Yesterday, last yesterday night. right. Right, so, yeah. right? Told you so. <laughs> So from the bottom up, we're seeing this rebranding for Bitcoin, for El Salvador, for Bukele, for everything here. So what are you guys most excited about? Well, um, I'm actually the one that coined that phrase uh, that El Salvador has, uh, uh, that President Bukele is responsible for the greatest rebrand in history. There's so many Bitcoin babies around, you know. I, I know President Bukele just had a baby at 444 this morning. <laughs> I, maybe that's Amina. <laughs> um, but uh, the greatest rebrand in history, of course, uh, just three or f just four or five years ago, this was considered the homicide capital of the world, the most dangerous place to be. Uh, five years later, four years later, it's the place everybody wants to be, right? And in terms of, um, that's because of one person, right? That's President Bukele, and he's uh, changed the, the fate, the history of this country. The future uh, is, is bright. Now, um, in terms of the title of this, this conference, Adopting Bitcoin, what Max and I focus on and what we've focused on uh, for the past two years for President Bukele is um, our most important adoption metric is how many great individuals, uh, Bitcoiners, builders, and Bitcoin companies are adopting El Salvador. So that's the number one metric that we look at because we're building Renaissance 2.0. Uh, that includes everything. We want to be Florence. We want to be Singapore. We want to be, you know, the next Silicon Valley. And we're all of that by attracting the best and the brightest. Yeah, I think that this, this idea of approaching this startup nation from a perspective of branding is helpful to get everybody on the same page. Uh, you know what we do over the past uh, year and a half to two years, of course, is to push the idea of Bitcoin maximalism and to create a moat or a barrier to keep the altcoins, uh, shitcoins out. And the calculation there, <laughs> and uh, the calculation there is that any possible incremental gain that might occur by entertaining a shit coin is dwarfed by focusing on Bitcoin and the brand value that comes with Bitcoin. So um, this is embraced by the president who's a genius, he's a political genius, and uh, I think the president Bukele and Bitcoin go well together. They complement each other in, in an extraordinary way. And um, so it just is, uh, we're getting, as, as they say, we're just getting started. So obviously, we all believe and think and hope that Bitcoin has reached escape velocity. Do you think El Salvador and the movement here, the innovation coming, as you were saying, do you think that El Salvador has already reached escape velocity? And if not, where do you think we hit that? 
uh, we were just talking about this with a team at Bitfinex is that, um, in fact, we're kind of like a 2011 Bitcoin. And, you know, Max spoke at the first Bitcoin conference ever, which was in Prague. And uh, it's like that. That's what uh, El Salvador is like. So we're still very early. Uh, these are the days. And, you know, there was a period of time. 2017, 2018, 2019, and we'd go to Bitcoin conferences, and there was a huge flood of new people in, and everybody was like, oh my God, what was it like to be in 2011 Bitcoin? It seems like a different world. Well, you're going to have the same thing in like five years from now. People are like, oh my God, you were in El Salvador in 2023. What was it like then? So I think that's where we are right now. Yeah, I'm fascinated. You know, my history goes and back to financial markets for 40 years now, 45 years. And you always look for mispricing in the markets. And it's very rare you, you find something like El Salvador that the market is so uh, incredibly underpriced. Uh, I think the rating agencies are now catching on. They just rated, uh, raised the rating. The bond market has been uh, extraordinary for El Salvador. It's the best performing emerging market. Uh, that's institutional money. Uh, now we have what are, what's called the smart money. This is uh, the folks who are going to come in uh, and start developing more seriously uh, the infrastructure and the tourism and things like that. And then a year from now, we're going to have um, a line at LaGuardia trying to get on a plane to escape the shithole that is uh, the United States uh, and fleeing. <laughs> right? We already have the, the migration numbers are already approaching reverse migration. They're very close now where you get more people are fleeing the U.S. to El Salvador than vice versa. And, I, and so this is, once that flips, I think that's escape velocity. That's how I would define it. I would also say that the rating, we were upgraded. El Salvador was upgraded yesterday by the S&P, but their rating is still total bullshit. And everybody in this room knows that. Like, there's no way this fucking country is not investment grade. We're all here investing and we're building because we believe it's investment grade. So it's bullshit, that rating agency. See, somebody laugh. So investing in El Salvador, you mentioned that. What is the best way for Bitcoiners to invest in the country, invest in the people? Obviously, everything Bitcoin, everything pro-Bitcoin, but what are you seeing being here, living in here? Okay, we have legal tender. What's the next step? What's the way that entrepreneurs and Bitcoin-focused entrepreneurs can invest in this country and accelerate that? Uh, we're building Renaissance 2.0, and that means everything. We need everything. We need, um, like I said, the best individuals, the best builders, the best, you know, companies, the best artists, the best uh, thinkers, doers, like beers. We don't want plunderers. We've locked them all up. We've kicked them out of the country. Uh, we don't have the corrupt anymore. Uh, all those shit coiners can go somewhere else. Uh, you know, one of the like Puerto Rico or something. Uh, we don't. We don't need them here. Right? So it, you just need to invest your time and your energy. And that includes just simply don't trust verify. Because if you're only, all of you here are verifying for a fact that you see what's in front of you and what you're experiencing here in El Salvador. Um, a lot of people outside El Salvador just read the press or read online FUD and they think it's, um, you know, that's all the investment they put into thinking whether or not they want to move there. They're like, no, I'm going to trust the mainstream media and I'm not going to move there or, or visit there. So just invest your time and energy. And um, once you come here, uh, I, I've seen a, quite a few people like Lena, she came here to visit and now she's staying. Like that's generally what happens. A lot of people come to visit and they never leave. Yeah, I think the new Statue of Liberty is a volcano in El Salvador. <laughs> you know, this is uh, this has become the home of the brave, land of the free, or is it land of the free, home of the brave? I'm, I've forgotten the, what's going on over there, that landmass wedge between Canada and Mexico. I, I forget sometimes. Uh, but this is really, uh, the, op the best investment is to come here. And, um, you know, we've been just in, um, for John over at Me Premier Bitcoin, for example, he came here and he's, Me Premier Bitcoin is in absolutely unbelievable and he really built that from, from scratch. And that's the kind of opportunity anybody who comes here who's entrepreneurial has a good idea. And the country needs everything across the board. You know, anything you do, they want, they need, and that's the message. And I'll say something else about living in El Salvador is that, as it was explained to me once by somebody, 
you know, if you go to Japan or you move to Japan, you, you never become Japanese. If you move to France, you really never become French. If you go to the U.S., there's a melting pot and you can become American. It's similar here in El Salvador. People love everyone moving here and you, they embrace you as family. You become Salvador in the second you eat your first pupusa. <laughs> Has that been your favorite thing about moving here is not just seeing Bitcoin adoption but being a part of the community and seeing that the whole nation support you or all the Bitcoiners here support you? Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the most important things. Like I said, the metric that we look at is the number of Bitcoiners adopting El Salvador, and that's how we gauge how, whether or not we're succeeding in what we're doing, uh, because all of the work we're doing, whether it's the education projects, whether it's, you know, um, you know, providing the very simple, clear laws and regulations, or whether it's having the Bitcoin office, as, as John Dennehy pointed out, like the fact that we have a Bitcoin office and you can call and uh, we can hear people's concerns. So the metric we look at is the number of companies moving here. And I know it's working and I, because I see the, the companies coming. I know Fold and Strike, for example, just announced they're moving here. We're gonna have another few rounds of big announcements over the next few months of people coming here. I just heard that you know, there was a gathering of some Bitcoin companies somewhere in the United States and there was a half-day discussion with this gathering of Bitcoiners that um, what is their El Salvador plan? So that's what we want is you need an El Salvador plan if you want to be seri taken seriously in the Bitcoin space. And this, th that's a sign of that we're succeeding in what we're trying to do. Yeah, I would uh, pretty much concur with that. That's how well I've trained him. <laughs> that's, that's our dinner conversation all night long. He just says, I pretty much concur with you. So with the embassy, with, with the regulatory clarity and everything else coming for Bitcoin in, in the US with the ETF and everything of that sort, do you think that that's going to have a major impact here in the narrative for obviously Bitcoin, but then also, oh, El Salvador did do the right thing and they did not adopt this. Do you, or do you think it's irrelevant? Do you think that El Salvador needs the West? You change your opinion. He'll just keep marching forward. Uh, well, obviously, President Bukele is a bit like a honey badger. He don't give a fuck. Like, it, like whatever they want to do. But, like, yeah, we've, you know, we always believed for quite a long time now, you know, Bitcoin is money. Everything else is a shit coin or a security, we'll call it, right? Um, but the U.S. was saying that, you know, the regulators were saying that over and over and over. And all these people keep on demanding regulatory clarity. And it's like... They're fucking telling you, like, it's a shit coin, it's a scam, they know it. Like, everybody knows it. Um, so we just like, okay, let's just put it down on paper. Because we, we realize, like, remember, uh, the US, the IMF, the, all these, like, international rating agencies, big banks were saying, El Salvador is going to fail, they're adopting Bitcoin, it's going to be a disaster, collapse, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what collapsed? All of those highly regulated entities out of New York City, which is like triply regulated inside the U.S. So you had all of those, you know, you had SBF, you had Celsius, you had BlockFi, you had all that stuff happen in the U.S. It didn't happen here for a reason, because we were here and we kept this Bitcoin country. Yeah, I think it's becoming an irresistibly attractive place to, to come and to, and to move. You know, the Bitcoin aesthetic and the Bitcoin protocol and the Bitcoin philosophy at the core of the Bitcoin phenomenon includes many sociological and um, even psychological aspects. And I don't think it's a coincidence that after making Bitcoin legal tender, the country then went on a program to make El Salvador, the most secure country in the hemisphere, because Bitcoin is um, a, a, a money that is unconfiscatable. And that means that you're demonetizing violence and you're intolerant of violence. Uh, it's uh, the birth of a new economy that favors peace, uh, peaceful exchange, because if you cannot coerce or violently extract wealth from some, somebody's property, you have to come into the conversation with something that the other person wants. And so that filters throughout the entire country. And, 
and that's part of the phenomenon that's going to be bringing a lot of people that might not be interested in Bitcoin, but they want to start a family, and they want to start a family in a safe place. So they'll come to El Salvador. Uh, so it has ancillary impacts throughout the entire matrix of society. Yeah, I mean, those are classical, like, liberal sort of ideas of enlightened ideas, right? That first, uh, Bitcoin policy is fits under a bigger policy of President Bukele, which is economic liberty. So first it was economic liberty, and then he introduced Bitcoin. And then, of course, you need to secure the blessings of liberty, right? What good is liberty for a few people when everybody has the God-given right to it? You're born with that, right? So this is like the foundational sort of ideas of Western society. And we've totally forgotten that, like, the, a lot of places you see in the U.S., I mean, we won't go too much into it, you see the plunder, the, like, the, the bizarre disintegration. As President Bukele pointed out in his interview with Tucker Carlson, like, it's by design almost, right? So we're, we're, we're by design creating the opposite here. We're, we're intentionally, with intent, like, we're, we're building a, a, an enlightened society where life, liberty, and property are protected. Do you think that that fire is, is catching steam elsewhere in Latin America? So obviously, you know, there are many other nations, not just El Salvador, but you think that they're seeing, oh wait, this is working, rebranding of El Salvador, more people are coming and more people moving here. Do you think that this passion for freedom is spreading? Like, do you see that happening or is it still taking time elsewhere outside of the country? Yeah, it's definitely catching a bid, you know, in other countries in the region and around the world, obviously in Argentina, you have a, a candidate who's running for president who's uh, very Bitcoin literate and uh, in the ethos of Bitcoin and, and the idea of separating money from state, which is one of the core pieces of what makes Bitcoin so appealing is that for the first time you, in history, you have separated money from state and you create individual sovereignty and this is incredibly appealing. So. It's uh, the fact that it's working here is certainly a shining example. We are the shining city on the hill. You know, we are Camelot. You know, but, but President Bukele is, uh, as I say, it's John F. Kennedy meets Steve Jobs. Uh, and the results speak for themselves. This is going the GDP here is gonna double uh, in the next five to six years, I predict, as well as being debt free by 2030. Yeah. I think obviously President Bukele is the most uh, popular leader across Latin America and every country wants him as their leader. But um, I think also, uh, as Max mentioned, he's a genius. So everybody, like you stand in front of the Mona Lisa and you're like, anybody could do that. I'm, I'm like, duh, like I, I'm a Da Vinci, right? Or everybody thinks they're Michelangelo. Uh, President Bukele is like that. He makes it look easy. Uh, but it's a lot of, um, not only hard work, but it's, you have to be born a leader like that, right? Like you have to be able to, uh, that strength of character. Like when we were here two years ago, I mean, the strength of character to withstand all of that global media onslaught, like Max and I were like the only two Bitcoiners around him and it was just like, it was like scary, like it was, it was like, you know, nerve, nerve wracking for somebody like myself, because I'm not a born leader like him, right? So, uh, you know, you're, you're being this onslaught of like, you guys are gonna fail, you're, you know, this is humiliating, you're gonna humiliate your entire country, this is a disaster, and you're like, I hope this works. <laughs> I'm thinking that, but he's just like so confident and able to, uh, you know, just lead to this point, like everything is I told you so, because he, he, he saw, had the vision and he went there. What he always says is like where El Salvador is going is to the place we want to be. So, you know, he wanted to be there and he took everybody along with him. And it's not going to be as easy for everybody else. Like all, all these people, they, they, it's, it's like a cargo cult, how they like think, well, he adopted Bitcoin and that's gonna make me popular like he was. But it takes a lot more than that, it's not just like, Bitcoin is it, and like it's everything. It's all of the, it's the courage, it's the determination, it's the fortitude, it's the strength of character, and most people don't have that. Now, Max, you said that you believe GDP for El Salvador double five years, debt free by 2030. 
Obviously, the having is coming up. Obviously, it's irrelevant in the bigger picture. El Salvador's got the momentum. They're going. But obviously, we have the having coming up, big event. Do you think that that new cycle is going to bring so many more of the El Salvadorans that are Bitcoin curious but still trying to figure it out? Do you think that we're about to have a massive wave of people on the ground figuring this out, meeting those adoption metrics, and actually coming in as a result of the having or any other catalyst? Definitely, you know, as far as adoption goes, another way I look at adoption is awareness. You know, awareness is the beginning of adoption. And in this country, you've got 100% awareness of Bitcoin. So that's really 100% beginning to adopt Bitcoin. And it's not about the actual use at the pupuseria, uh, which of course is growing quite rapidly. But the fact that everyone is aware of Bitcoin and starts to think about separating money from state, starts to think about perfect money, starts to think about having absolutely scarce, perfect uh, money, it, this is um, begins to create a lot of attraction for people around the world who are looking around and they're not really happy. We just got a delegation from, I guess I can speak other details, you know, we got a delegation from Santa Monica, California, who arrived and they talked to us uh, about the fact that they are disheartened. They are, they, they look around and they see uh, human, uh, the human condition is deteriorating. You know, what can they do to be more like El Salvador? Now, I spent a lot of years in California. I spent a lot of years in Santa Monica. I started a company in Santa Monica. So to have this delegation come from Santa Monica into uh, El Salvador and, and ask for help, how can we be more like you guys? How can we restore optimism? How can we get rid of this institutionalized cynicism that has become the political sphere in the United States? So that tells you, I think, where we are in the cycle. And we're about to experience an enormous amount of um, influx of folks coming into the country and bringing their talent, and um, it's going to be a fantastic next five, ten years. I think it's also important to point out that El Salvador is has we've we have a very very solid foundation, like for that launch up, and it's really important to note that during this the bear market has been great for us because it kept all the shit coiners out. It made our jobs easier. Um, and Bitcoiners don't ever give a fuck about bear markets, right? That's always when the, the best memes come out. So we're all having fun, right? And we're builders. So we're building. Uh, the shit coiners run away because there's nothing to plunder. They're, they're just looking to scam people uh, desperate with FOMO. But it's important to note, like, this conference put together by, you know, Galloy and Bitfinex, right? Blink and, and Bitfinex. And, you know, Galloway were the first, Bitcoin Beach Wallet were some of the first builders here, building very early in 2019, 2020, yeah, 2020. So they're, like, building early, and then Bitfinex and, and Tether have been very important partners to El Salvador. Um, so this is our, this is, you know, it's kind of like a, a boutique startup nation. So we get to like hand pick the people that we want here because that we know for being around, being so old as we are <laughs> and being around forever. Um, that's what I always tell people when like, oh man, I wish I were around in 2011. And I was like, then you'd be as old as I am. So uh, maybe you wouldn't want to be around. But no, the fact that we've known, like we, we know the people that survived all the bear markets and all the, especially the boom markets. Those are the hardest ones to survive with your integrity intact. So we have, like, we've individually bringing every one of those uh, sort of people and companies here. So I just think that's also built such a first mover advantage. And speaking of moats, like, it's going to be hard for any other country to replicate what we have because President Bukele is like a one in 500 year sort of leader. So you have to have another one of those happen somewhere on earth. And then you have to have, um, you know, the builders. And so most people in this space are plunderers, like in the crypto space are plunderers. And you see that in other places like Puerto Rico, I mentioned, they don't build anything, but w we only want builders here. And uh, I, I think uh, we have a room of builders here. <laughs> Well, I remember, you know, two, two years ago, 18 months ago, Stacy and I would kind of, um, you know, have lunch and talk and, you know, and say, if we were putting together a dream team of the best Bitcoiners in the world, who would we invite for this? And uh, we reached out 
and they came. And I think the results speak for themselves. So uh, this, is, this is what we really have been able to bring to the table is we've been around a while and we have met everybody in this space. We know pretty much where all the bodies are buried and who's doing actual work. And so we used our Rolodex, which is a, a technology from the 1970s. I don't know if anyone remembers the Rolodex, but to give you an idea of how old I am. Uh, That's like four people. <laughs> let's hear it. Go boomers. Boomers for Bitcoin. <laughs> Is it still 3,000? Go back to bed, Grandpa. Okay. So, um, and we were successful. Yep. That's great. I agree. I, there are so many builders here. We're all optimistic. We're all optimistic on the future. Despite that, what do you think is the biggest threat, and how can we build and improve to mitigate those threats and give the best possible outcome in the future? The only threat is that, uh, like, I take a vacation, and I'm not there to beat the shit out of some shit coiner that shows up at the airport. <laughs> no, you know, um, I, I, you know I, I just believe that once people taste not only the freedom, the liberty, the good times, you know, the strong men create the good times. I think we're still, like, we're at that phase where it's strong men creating good times. And the bad times are so just recent here, they're not going to allow the plunderers in, the scammers in, and, and stuff like that, because they're like, dude, we just came out of 50 years of that. Uh, go plunder Puerto Rico. I keep on bringing up Puerto Rico, because uh, I know a lot of shit coiners there. <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, the threat would be, let's have a civil war. No, we had that already. Uh, the threat would be, let's have a gang war. Uh, no, we just had that, right? So that they've come out of the threats. They've come out of the dark ages. The, the, and they're, it's really a sense of liberation. I mean, I remember those photos after World War II of Liberation Day, Victory in Europe Day, and people in the streets kissing and dancing. And that's really the feeling you get. And people have been liberated. They can actually go outside of their homes. You know, a story I heard a guy say that before Bukele, my house was too small. Now my house is too big. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, before Bukele, when the gangs ran the country, we never left our house and we never had enough room. Now, after Bukele, the gangs are gone and nobody's home. <laughs> They're all outside. My house is too big. And so this is, these are the types of stories you hear every single day. People are, actually what's amazing is that the transformation has been so fast. One of the biggest groups of folks that are in disbelief are Salvadorans themselves, who can't believe that they're actually able to walk safely. And you see them down in the historic center and, and other areas of the country just luxuriating in the freedom of walking without being threatened, which is something everyone in the, the U.S. has taken for granted, and it shows. You know, we've become a bit too decadent, and it's not working in the, in the U.S. In the last few moments here, too, I also want to point out the builders that are homegrown, the Salvadoran builders, and you've all seen them. We've gone to a few conferences over the past year. We went to Bitcoin 2023 in Miami, and then we went to uh, the one, uh, Pacific Bitcoin and then Lugano. And with us, we had the ASO Bitcoin arranged, the El Salvador, you know, Bitcoin country tourism booth. And you saw the Salvadoran builders. You saw people like K1, uh, Tianqui, Chorito Cafe. So we, we, th there's a domestic startup population, uh, uh, startup culture developing here as well. So these are first generation, like we're all, th this is the early stage at 2011, 2012 of Bitcoin being back then, and the same thing is happening here. So you're starting to see uh, a startup culture in El Salvador itself. So I think that's great because I, I think it would have been, uh, you know, bad news if it was just all the Westerners arriving here, you know, the gringos arriving here with their, you know, jobs or their, their companies. But they're building stuff here as well. So that's amazing to see. Yeah. Yep. So there's still more work to be done, right? There's still more things to happen. Yes, and come yeah. tell Salvador. Yeah. We need more builders here. It helps us Definitely. because you know uh, the the more the merry the 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 more good people. If you're a bad person, stay the fuck away. Okay, don't come here. Yeah. Nobody's here. Well, thank you guys very much. It's very encouraging to be here. See it.
not just to trust the news, but to verify that it's happening and it's here and people are loving it. So thank you for all you've done. Thank you.